Hello everyone, Reginald Scott here. Welcome to the video. Hope you're all doing really well today. Thank you for clicking on the video and I hope you enjoy the content. And if you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And uh, if you're feeling inclined, share with a friend. Thank you very much. So today I've done a teardown of my Hyper 2020 wheel hubs. Uh, these were the wheels that were available to me when I bought them. Now there's a lot more choice on the Winspace website. A really interesting stuff on there you can now get. Um, when I bought my wheels, they came with these um, raw aluminium axles and only ceramic bearings as an option. Now, uh, one of the improvements they immediately made was they now anodize the axles like this, which makes them better, much more durable and less likely to wear and corrode, which is absolutely fantastic. And they also give an option now to replace um, the bearings instead of with ceramic with steel bearings, okay, which I would say is a much better option. So if you are going to buy hyper wheels, Go for the ones with the steel bearings simply for two reasons. Number one, steel bearings are better than hybrid ceramic and in the long term, at least, even if they're not top quality steel bearings, they're steel, still better, steel better, still better than uh, ceramic for durability and longevity. And uh, also they're cheaper as well, like you'll pay less on the website for those steel bearings. And so when you come to upgrade to some really good bearings, like these MTN ones that I've got here today, it's going to cost you less overall. So let's start off with these axles. Now, like I say, these now are anodized, but if you're unlucky like me and you got them at the time when they were still raw aluminium like this, you're probably going to get some significant wear on these. Now, where the end caps fit on the ends of these axles, there's a lot of wear. Um, and I'm not sure whether this is due to dirt or corrosion, but there's some actual divots, as you can see, taken out of the ends of these. And if you think this is just where that end cap fits on. So this shouldn't be rotating inside here, um, but it's worn quite significantly. I think it's probably due to water getting in there and causing some level of corrosion on that rather than it be galling or anything from rotation. Because like I say, with these caps on, they, they shouldn't be rotating on the ends here. It should only be rotating on these bearing surfaces here. Um, on the bearing surfaces, again, you can see this somewhere. You can see where the bearing has been sitting here. And you can see where the, um, the hub body, this, has been rotating as well on those other bearings. Same for the back end. And again, where the cap fits on the back, um, yeah, some significant wear there and this blackening and pitting on the aluminium. Again, I'm guessing this is a result of um, corrosion. Uh, on the front, this one has really suffered from corrosion. After 300 kilometers, this wheel was showing signs of, of wear already, um, audibly from the bearings. So the bearings, hybrid ceramics, they were already starting to wear out after 300 kilometers when I would spin the wheel. Um, originally, it was very silent, very smooth. After about 300 kilometers of use, I would spin the wheel and you could hear the wheel, uh, the bearings in the wheel grinding away and making awful noises. And you can actually listen to that in my original review on my hyper wheels. Um, after 2000 kilometers, my front wheel actually stopped rotating. And I examined the wheel and it turned out some water had gotten in and one of the bearings had become really badly corroded. Let's go through each bearing. So the two front bearings, one feels okay. I mean, I can definitely feel somewhere in this. Um, it's not smooth. There's, it's just a little bit draggy and tiny bit gritty. Not much, but you can definitely feel the wear in it after 4,000 kilometers. This one, this one is a complete train wreck. And this is the one, as you can see, that got rusty, even though I have cleaned this after 2000 kilometers and re-greased it. There's still visible signs of rust and decay in here. Um, and it just feels like utter rubbish, absolute rubbish. Total gravel, this one. Uh, then this bearing, which sits at the front 
of the hub body here um, this one isn't actually turning properly I can only get that much of a turn out of it and it stops on something so this also is probably rusty um, let's just open it up and have a look yeah that's uh, gotten rusty as well not good at all now there was plenty of grease on these but i guess i'm gonna have to add a bit more grease to the outside of the seals to prevent this from happening then these two uh one in the rear of the hub body and one on the, the main axle here back of the axle um these feel okay but again like this one you can definitely feel wear in them they're a little bit draggy tiny bit gravelly they're not bad but they're not brilliant they're definitely showing signs of wear and then finally uh, this is the the only one of the bearings in the set which is different from the others these are all 6.8 is it uh, do, 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 do. yeah 6.803s as you can see ceramic ball 6.803s this one is a 6.9 6903 ceramic ball and this is i must admit this is the only one that feels really good um there's very little wear in this one at all um possibly the location and the size of the bearing has helped it inside the hub uh, this one sits all the way at the back here out the way of all the dirt and the grime and um yeah it's doing really well actually so this one you know Although I'm not going to reuse it, it's suffered a lot less than the others. Now, however, when you open it up, you can see how dirty this is. All that blackened dirt in there, is it nitride, silicon nitride? Um, ceramic balls have basically been wearing away at the steel, the steel race, and created all this black dirt. It's like almost like a soot. So this is wearing. It just feels really good uh, to say it's had all the same use as the others which are worn much worse but anyway basically all the bearings are due for replacement um, they're not performing as well as they should be the hub body itself uh, is looking really good it's got some wear at the top here uh, where the cassette has been moving slightly but generally speaking, this is suffering a lot less bad than, say, some of the DT Swiss hubs than I have. That I have, sorry. Um, the DT Swiss hubs are considerably lighter. They must be made of a much lighter and softer aluminium. Actually, this one's a little bit harder, and uh, it's it's doing really, really well. I'm quite impressed with this um, hub body, and uh, the bearing seats are all good as well. I cleaned this wheel with um, kitchen paper. Uh, cotton swabs and rags basically my wife just threw out a load of clothing so I've got a lovely collection of soft rags now um, <laughs> to replace my old rags which is good that's thank you for my wife for that the poles uh, the springs are fine the poles are showing somewhere these are extremely hard poles steel poles so they should be absolutely fine for several thousand more kilometers i can't see myself changing these anytime soon in fact i've never changed a set of pulls um in a set of wheels before i've actually worn everything else of the wheel out first before i ever replaced the pull so these should be absolutely fine but you can just see how they're wearing they're wearing slightly lopsidedly on this edge i'm guessing that that's because there's a tiny bit of movement in where the uh, the pole sits in the hub body I'm thinking it probably just yeah it wobbles slightly up and down so it's not engaging completely flat with the teeth on the inside of the hub and that's causing that uneven wear there but not a major problem oh there's only one more thing which I'm a bit concerned about which is this spacer ring, this little washer that sits behind the hub body, between the hub body and the the main bearing, the uh, 6903. And that, yeah, that's showing a lot of wear, as you can see, for such a thin 
piece of metal it's really getting ground away I did put a lot of grease on this last time I serviced these wheels but clearly it wasn't enough to prevent significant wear occurring here so I'm really wondering what to do about this um, I do have a replacement for this somewhere but it's a bit disappointing that it's wearing so quickly oh and uh, of course this is the spacer that fits inside the hub body here um, and <laughs> I did use my bearing puller to remove these bearings and as you can see this spacer this soft aluminium spacer is completely undamaged from the use of my bearing puller I will even demonstrate by placing it on the axle you can see it's not flared or damaged in any way there you go okay so let's get on with explaining why hybrid ceramic bearings are inferior to standard steel bearings or even top quality steel bearings so with a normal bearing if i can find one here we go this is one for demonstration purposes um, you've got steel balls steel cage and steel inner and outer race with hybrid ceramics um, a lot of them on the market the really really cheap ones uh, what you'll find is actually the racers are made of a polymer or a plastic because it makes manufacture of the bearing a lot easier and um, it often is done by people by hand um, whereas proper steel bearings tend to be manufactured by machines and so they're a bit more accurate a bit more uh, tolerances are a bit better now these ones actually are pretty good for hybrid ceramics because they come with a steel cage you can just see it there um, so that is a benefit because steel cages are more efficient than the plastic cages so if you have hybrid ceramic bearings with plastic cages they are less efficient than ones with steel cages um, but that's the first reason not to buy hybrid ceramics because generally they do come with plastic cages the, the main issue that these have is that because the balls are so hard, they wear the bearing out really quickly. That wear reduces your efficiency. And it can also uh, shortens the life of the bearing as well. And standard steel bearing should do tens of thousands of kilometers. Um, these things, like I say, after 300 kilometers, they're already starting to show signs of wear. Um, but it's not only an efficiency and a speed thing, not only is it going to make you slower, much faster as these things deteriorate at an accelerated rate but also it's a safety issue if you have wear occurring in the bearing what you'll start to get is play between the inner and outer race and that play is really dangerous you don't want that because if the inner and outer race are able to move like this um, as the bearing starts to wear the entire axle is going to be loose in the housing and that can cause a failure in the uh, the hub basically um, it can actually end up doing something like disconnecting the poles or jamming the poles or having two pieces of metal that shouldn't be colliding together colliding together it can do all sorts of problems with the wheel so you really don't want to be running hybrid ceramics for very long or you don't want to be running them at all with a, a standard steel bearing like this yes it's not going to run as smoothly as a hybrid ceramic when you buy the hybrid ceramic new but after a year of use what you'll probably find is that the steel bearing is faster or more efficient than the hybrid ceramic because of the, the speed at which the hybrid ceramics deteriorate and if you go for a top quality bearing like these it's going to be equally as good as a hybrid ceramic bearing maybe even better um, according to some people these are better um that i cannot prove or disprove but i know from feeling these bearings that they are incredibly smooth and well made they feel absolutely fantastic so i'm really looking forward to installing these into my wheels these are of course from the japanese company ntn now there were some questions raised um on the communities tab of my youtube channel about whether these are genuine bearings or not so what i did was i downloaded the app that ntn have which is um authentibear 
Um, it's a free app you can download on your iPhone or Android, and you basically scan the QR code, and it tells you if it's an authentic bearing serial number for the box. And the other aspects of their authentication process go along the lines of a visual inspection. So you can visually inspect the sticker as well to make sure that the sticker is genuine. It's a little bit like examining money. So money has these kind of reflectors on it and very, very intricate patterns on it. And the authentic authentication three-step process shows you how to examine those. Um, and when I did that, everything came back genuine. So that's great. Now I can't 100% prove that these are genuine NTN bearings, but I did buy them from uh, simplybearings.com, which is the largest wholesaler of bearings in the UK. And I would imagine that they buy their bearings in bulk directly from NTN Japan. Um, that would be my guess. Um, so it's pretty safe if you go for a big bearing company that's selling a lot or large quantities of bearings, you're probably likely to get genuine bearings. Um, and because they're wholesaling those bearings, you get a really good price as well. Here's my invoice from Simply Bearings. I've cut off um, any of the other information, but you can see how much I spent. Unfortunately, my delivery was 44.28. That's because I live in Brunei on the other side of the world. If you're in the UK, I think you can get free delivery. So that's really good. Um, but unfortunately, me, because I live in the middle of nowhere, I had to pay a lot of delivery. So you can ignore that. Um, the total cost for me for this, these bearings, I actually bought twice as many as I need for this project, just in case I get another pair of hyper wheels I want to upgrade, or um, eventually these wear out and I want to replace them. So I actually just doubled up on my um, my bearing purchase. And it came to 118.96. So you can do two pairs of wheels with that. Um, and I bought because I bought ten of the um, the six eight zero threes. What you find on simplybearings.com is that if you buy uh, ten or more, every ten group you buy, you get a discount on it. So that is really good. So these ended up being really cheap per bearing. Um, I didn't buy ten of the six nines, so they were full price. 1173. If you compare this with other people selling online, um, it is actually a really big saving. Some people are charging like 15 pounds for these ones. So that's a big saving there. So there you go. I recommend simplybearings.com for your bearings um, if you want to save a bit of money and be sure that you're getting the genuine thing. Right, let's get on with preparing this hub for reinstallation. Hello folks, just a quick update on that bearing replacement. So I noticed in the rear wheel when I got it back in the bike soon after doing the uh, the bearing upgrade um, that there was about half a millimetre worth of travel in the back wheel from side to side. So there's a bit of play. So I took the wheel apart another few times actually. I think I took it apart three times uh, just to check each part of the wheel and make sure that I hadn't done anything wrong or that there wasn't anything missing or something like that. And my conclusion is that the wear that I showed you in this video on the axle is actually enough to cause that play, that the, the axle is so badly worn that it's induced this very small amount of play. Now, I, you only really feel that play when it's in the, uh, the frame of the bicycle and you only feel it right on the top of the tire, basically. You can just move the top of the tire ever so slightly from side to side. Um, so the amount of travel that's actually in the hub itself is minuscule. You won't even feel it when the hub is in your hand. You won't be able to tell from just trying to rock the axle backwards and forwards. Um, so like I say, yeah, I think it is a worn out axle, which is a shame because the wheels have done, I think, less than 5,000 kilometers. I, re I reckon about 4,000 plus something, um, which is not even a year's worth of use for most of you. I mean, most of you are going to be doing more than 5,000 kilometers a year. So that's disappointing. The good news is that if you buy their wheels now, they come with the anodized axles, which are much more resilient to wear, um, much less likely to wear out. Um, but I also believe that the major issue here was that the hybrid ceramic bearings wore out so quickly. Like I say, they started to show wear after only 300 kilometers. They wore out so quickly that that allowed play in the, uh, the hub. And it's that play, that side to side motion, which has caused the damage in the axle that has now resulted in play, even with brand new bearings. 
Um, I checked the bearings, bearings are absolutely fine. So I believe it's definitely the axle and possibly the end caps as well are worn out. So I'm gonna order new ones from Windspace if I can. A uh, new set of end caps and new axle and see how that helps. Front wheel, there doesn't appear to be any problem. Um, that one's absolutely rock solid. It's just the rear wheel that's having this very small amount of play. But it is dangerous um, to, to have an axle that wears that quickly. Um, I have been using them recently and they've been fine. But like I say, I still will replace the axle anyway. Um, bad news is if you bought your wheels at the same time as me and you do have those raw aluminium axles, it's probably a good idea to get them checked. Um, and it's certainly a good idea to get rid of the hybrid ceramic bearings out of the wheel as soon as possible and get them replaced with something a bit more reliable and a bit more durable. Um, it is disappointing uh, because the wheel should have lasted a lot longer than that. But like I say, it was the, uh, I guess it was a decision of the marketing department to go with hybrid ceramics. Um, anyway, that's about it. So be warned, if you do have the raw aluminium axles, you may have similar wear than I have after only a short period of time. All right, back to the rest of the video.